Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. I spoke about George Hook yesterday, the Irish broadcaster and the rugby union analyst. Last Friday, he covered the rape story about the girl who got drunk and was taken advantage of at a hotel, allegedly by a former member of the British Olympic swim team. Two men allegedly took advantage of her. It's a very serious story. Obviously, George Hook said clearly last Friday, the girl didn't deserve it and didn't ask for it, importantly. But um, he did ask, why don't we, as people, have a discussion about personal responsibility? And as you know, the progressives started their Twitter storm, the media piled on in, and his own colleagues at News Talk have asked for him to be fired. Victim blaming, they said. Now, as I speak to you, Hook hasn't yet been fired. Hopefully he won't be. Just to reiterate, he never blamed the girl. And I do believe it's got more to do with the fact that he has supported the families of young women who believe they were injured by the HPV, human papillomavirus vaccine, otherwise known as Gardasil. George Hook stuck, stuck up for those families and for the mother's rights to ask questions. And he took on Ireland's HSE, the Health and Safety Executive, and he took on the government. I think that has a lot to do with it. But anyway, leaving that aside, it rolls on. Paul Murphy is a socialist TD, a member of parliament. TD means Chuck de Dola, which means member of parliament, uh, in Dublin. And he's part of the Solidarity Party. He's a politician. Now, I invited Murphy on the programme today. I contacted um, Murphy and asked him, would he come on the programme? Because Murphy contacted News Talk. This is a politician now, mind. And he said, no member of Solidarity would speak to News Talk until George Hook was sacked. So now you have politicians saying these are supposed to be the arbiters of free speech, the defenders of free speech. You've got politicians contacting radio stations now saying, if you don't sack this guy, none of our party, none of the executive, none of the members will speak with you again until that uh, man isn't there anymore. Identitarianism, madness, utter madness and... It's contemptible. It's so disgusting. Now, I invited Murphy on the programme not to abuse him and shout at him, but to ask him what the hell is a politician calling for somebody to be fired for over what is basically nothing other than an opinion. Agree with it or not. I did find out that Murphy, the TD, the politician, and Hook have previous. Murphy was arrested a few years ago as part of water rate protests in Ireland. I support Murphy on that and everyone else standing up to the tyranny of the Irish government and Irish water. But two years ago they had a car crash interview. Hook didn't do very well now in the interview. But I think a little bit of revenge I think has something to do with Paul Murphy asking for George Hook to be sacked. It's disgraceful. I think it's disgraceful anyway. Moving on, 10 minutes past the hour. Donald Trump supporters are angry. They're very angry. Don't make me angry, Mr. McGee. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Trump's alt-right supporters, whatever they call themselves, the ones who cried tears of joy when he was elected, who said, this is it. He's going to stand up to the man. He's going to stand up to the man. Well, they're cheesed off today, dear listener. They're cheesed off. Trump told media at the White House that he is close to a deal, a bipartisan deal, with the Democrats to protect young undocumented migrants known these days as dreamers. They're not the only ones. Trump did a deal, or apparently has done a deal, he says not yet, with top Democrats Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, and the right are hopping mad. So this is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Programme, or DACA, and it will allow around 800,000 people to stay in America 
and also give them temporary permits to work and to study, right? Now, I have no problem one way or the other with this, but last week, Trump said he would cancel the programme, right? This is typical of what we've seen under Trump. Now, Sean Hannity is an idiot-in-chief at Fox News. He's crying. One of Trump's biggest fans, he's crying. He's blaming weak Republicans and not Trump himself, the ultimate flip-flopper, to use their own term. Do you want to hear what Trump had to say a short time ago? This is uh, the great one explaining to the media exactly what's going on. Well, we're working on a plan subject to getting massive border control. We're working on a uh, plan for DACA. People want to see that happen. You have 800,000 young people brought here, no fault of their own. So we're working on a plan. We'll see how it works out. But we're going to get massive border security as part of that. And I think something can happen. We'll see what happens. But something will happen. Well, we want to get massive border security. And I think that both Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, I think they agree with it. But so we met last night with, as you know, Schumer, Pelosi, and a whole group. And I think we're fairly close, but we have to get massive border security. Is there anything? Oh, I think he's on board. Yeah, Mitch is on board. Paul Ryan's on board. We all feel, look, 92% of the people agree on DACA. But what we want is we want very, very powerful border security. Okay? Yeah, I, I don't know who decided to do the interview right next to the engines of, I'm, I'm presuming it was Air Force One. It sounded like an airplane anyway, so apologies for the audio, not my fault. Trump said... 92% or 95% of people are behind it, but Trump himself was vehemently opposed to it only a week ago. But don't tell that to Trump supporters. They're likely to go into meltdown. Identity politics. Identitarianism. The inability to criticise something which you hold dear to yourself. The inability to be self-analytical and self-critical. Jesus, maybe I was wrong to think that Trump was the man who was going to go after the establishment. Jesus, maybe I was wrong. These are words that don't exist in the vocabulary of the progressive, of the lunatic lefty, or the rabid <laughs> right-wingers. No, no ability to look introspectively. None whatsoever. Now, the inquiry into the Grenfell Tower fire has opened. You might have heard this on the news at the beginning of the programme. Its chairman promised it would provide answers to how the disaster could have happened in 21st century London. The controversial Sir Martin Morbick said he wouldn't shrink away from making recommendations that could lead to prosecutions. I believe it when I see it. Grenfell survivors say they still feel that they haven't been listened to. This is Sir Martin Morbick today. It's right that at the very outset of the inquiry, uh, I should express on my own behalf and on behalf of all members of the inquiry team the dismay and sadness we feel at the loss of life, devastation and injury caused by the fire. We are acutely aware not only that so many people died or were injured in the fire, but that many of those who survived have been severely affected by their experiences. We are also conscious that many have lost everything and even now are dependent on others for many of their daily needs. The inquiry cannot undo any of that, but it can and will provide answers to the pressing questions of how a disaster of this kind could occur in 21st century London and thereby, I hope, provide a small measure of solace. So why is Sir Martin Morbick controversial? Well, as I mentioned on this programme several times in the past, as a judge, he once actually upheld a decision. He upheld a decision to rehome a woman whose house had burned down, to rehome her 50 miles away, despite hearing evidence from everybody, doctors, social workers, her neighbours, the police, God and sonny Jesus, everybody came forward to say the woman was alone, 
her friends and neighbours were vital to her, to her well-being, and that they helped care for her because she had a debilitating long-term illness. Bick said, it's okay, I, I hear all of that, but I'm still going to rehome her 50 miles away from her neighbourhood. So he isn't a man suitable for an inquiry that's really about social cleansing as much as it is about the dead people, and I don't mean in any way to be disrespectful to the dead. The inquiry should be about the ongoing social cleansing programme as part of the Hunger Games Society, but of course it won't be. And finally for the minute, at least 50 people have been killed in two attacks in southern Iraq. A suicide bomber detonated a vest and gunmen fired inside a restaurant near Nasiriya, which is the capital of the Dikar province. Soon afterwards, another car bomb exploded at a nearby checkpoint. At least 50 are dead. Islamic State carried out the attacks. Shia Muslim pilgrims, including Iranians, are uh, among the dead. And more than 80 people were injured. Now, just in case you were wondering, there are no candlelit vigils planned for London, Manchester, Paris or Brussels. Facebook's feature where you identify yourself as safe hasn't been activated. There are no memes saying I am Nazaria or I am Iraq. Kay Burley, Jeremy Thompson and Sarah Jane Mee are not flying to Iraq to present three days of news from there. And even though two and a half times more people died today than died in Manchester, politicians are not going on television to say that they stand with Iraq or Nasiriya or Afghanistan and politicians are not going on television to say we will never be defeated. And as far as we know at the Richie Allen Show there are no plans to hold a benefit concert for the people of Nasiriya anytime soon. Just in case you were wondering.